Welcome to Jayheart Muddleworks. In this video, I'm going to have a quick update on the 41 Chevy pickup from Revell that I'm building as part of my buddy build with Chris from CD Scale Models. And then I want to show you how I paint wood planks for things like truck beds. Welcome to my workbench. Let's get started. Okay, guys, just a quick update before we move on to the painting the truck beds tutorial. We have clear and oh my lord, is it gorgeous. After polishing out the clear, I went ahead and added, uh, masked off and painted the surround for the gas filler tank. So it looks like a, a rubber surround. And this camera is just not doing any justice to this red. It almost looks like a texture, but when you look at it in real life, it's not. It's metal flake. Uh, the camera is making it look almost like a texture, but when you look at it in real life, it is glassy smooth. And what you're seeing, I'm seeing is actual shiny, sparkly metal flake. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I've got the dashboard just kind of dry fit in there as I was doing some mock-ups. See that came out just fantastic. Even the small little part where we botched it doesn't look too bad. I have to be very careful with this part. I was polishing out the clear because I had a bunch of dust in it. This is Texas. And I, right there, I sanded straight through. I was using my Dremel to polish. I had sanded, and I sanded everything nice and smooth. It was gorgeous. Just needed to be polished back up. Hit it with the, the compound and my Dremel. And I made just a stupid mistake, and I stopped for far too long. And it went just straight down to the plastic. I don't know what happened. I was in a hurry. I wasn't p taking my time. I wasn't, I was doing it in between doing things. Just all the things I know not to do, and I did it anyhow, and I went straight to the plastic. So I had to sand and just reprimer just that fender, masked off the area that's down here. And I have resprayed it. I've actually resprayed it twice because the first time I resprayed it, it came out way too dark. It was like a sh almost a gloss black black instead of being this blue black metallic candy that we've got. It was almost just straight gloss black. So I ended up waiting and sanding it again and priming it again and completely respraying it again. This time I sprayed it with two spoons. So I sprayed my first two coats of black, sprayed two spoons along with it, clear coated one coat of the spoons because you can't really tell the color until you put clear on it. And that kind of told me how close I was getting. And then I sprayed the next coat on the spoon and clear coated the spoon and that told me if I was going to go too far or not. And that let me get real close on a color match. So this is still wet and tacky. So this is going to have to be sanded and polished later uh, once it's actually fully cured. So we're just being real careful with this. We went ahead and cleared our wheels. Those came out gorgeous. It's a shame that there's a chrome hubcap that's going to cover those most of those up. I may or may not use the hubcaps. I'm trying to decide. And we went ahead and did our chrome. This is the Gravity Colors uh, McLaren Chrome Effect. There's the fuel filler cap. I went ahead and drilled and pinned the fuel filler cap as well like I do my mirrors. It's just going to give it a little bit extra something to hold on to so that when I'm gluing them in, it'll hold better. It won't it has less chance of getting knocked off or something. And we chromed all of our door handles. And these are the handles for the trunk or for the hood. They're supposed to be the body color, and I really didn't like that. I wanted them to be chrome as well. So I went ahead and chromed them up. So that's an update on the buddy build, how the buddy build's going so far on the bodywork. And now we're gonna go ahead and move into the painting the wooden truck bed tutorial part of the video. Alright, so real quick, we're just gonna run through what we're gonna be using to paint this. 
We're going to primer with some Stylo Res Gray. We'll be base coating with some Tamiya LP59 NATO Brown. You can use the acrylics if you want. I have some of the lacquers, so I'm using them. We're also going to use the NATO Brown and some flat black to make a couple of knots in the wood. We are going to be doing some brush painting with some deck tan, some flat brown, can't read that anymore, but that's flat brown, and some brown JGSDF. It's a nice medium-ish brown. We're going to use those to do some brush work, and we're going to be finishing this off with some clear red and some clear yellow. So here's our bed. We primered it with some Stunnel Res Gray. And then we base coated it with some Tamiya LP59 NATO Brown. It was like chocolate milk. And that's gotten us to this point here. We're now going to take a broad brush. And we're going to be working with some deck tan, some brown JG SDF XF72, and some XF10 regular brown. We're going to dip this in here. We're going to start with the deck tan. We get most of it off, but not all of it. We're not going to quite be dry brushing, but I don't want it to be sloppy wet. I want to be able to get some streaking going. And we definitely want to get in here because I don't want this to be smooth. One thing I'm definitely not looking for is smooth. Some areas to be brighter than others. Don't forget to get these edges. Do the same thing on the underside. Underside's going to be a little harder to do because it's got these beams in the way. Stab into the beam and then pull down. Turn around and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Stab into the beam. I'm doing that so that I get some smooth coverage all the way up into where the beam is going to go. I don't want to have like a bar of dark brown. I want it to look like the beam sitting on top of the wood, not like the wood stops and then there's a beam. Just do a real quick clean on my brush and I'm going to switch to my next color. For the next color I'm going with the brown. This is the darkest of the three colors. Dab in and pull down. I kind of want to hit areas that I know have a real heavy concentration of the light. 
so I can try and break that up a little bit. I don't want to completely eliminate the light, I just don't want like huge concentrations of it. That's going to get us about here. And now we're going to get into this JGSDF Brown. We just want to repeat the process that we did on the last two colors, long up and down strokes. Don't change directions. Don't suddenly go side to side. Look for areas you may have over concentrated the dark brown, or you may still have bright light spots. Try to break it up a little bit, blend things in. Just kind of work this, this last color in there. That's where we're at right now. Our next steps are gonna to be to go into the spray booth and we're gonna pull a couple of tricks with the spray booth. I might add a knot or two here and there and then we're gonna do some clear colors to really make this come to life. All right, we're gonna put a couple of knots in the wood starting with the NATO brown. This is going to add a little bit of extra detail that's really gonna stand out and look great. Now for the next step, I have switched my needle and nozzle to the 0.2mm needle and nozzle set. If you do not have a fine needle and nozzle set up like this, you can do this with a 0.3. You may need to remove the crown tip so that you can get in really close, and you may need to reduce the air pressure more. Also, I would advise practicing several times on a sheet of paper or something before you have a go at your painted part, really just to get a a feel for putting paint down at this low air pressure and this close so you don't spider web paint everywhere. Because I am using the smaller needle and nozzle and I'm much closer to the work, I'm spraying at only about 10 psi right now. You know, I usually spray around 18 to 20, but again, I don't want to spatter paint everywhere and I'm just going to give this airbrush the slightest touch on the paint flow. So I'm going to just barely barely caress this button and put a brown dot right where I want to knot. We're going to follow that one up with the second one on this board over here. Maybe even cut across two boards. And finally I'm going to put one on the second board down here. Now wherever you put one on the front side, you want to flip it over and put one on the exact same spot on the back because the knots often go through the same board. So count and put it in the same place here. And then we're going to count over here. And then one more on this second board down here. And that is the beginning of our knots. We've cleaned out the airbrush and we've loaded up some flat black. We've lowered the air pressure a little bit more to around 8-ish around PSI. And we're going to get really close and use the gentlest touch on the airbrush trigger. Uh, again, we want to make an even smaller black spot inside the brown spots we just made. Uh, <clears throat> now, once you have all three of these, flip it over and hit the spots we built on the back side as well. All right, so that's the basis for our knots. We're going to go ahead and switch back to the 0.35 needle and nozzle setup, and we're going to finish this up with our clear red and clear yellow steps. 
All right, we're back and we switched back to the 0.35 needle nozzle setup. We have some Tamiya clear red in here and we have the pressure back up to between 15 and 18 PSI. I do have to apologize as most, most of this footage is out of frame. It looks like I may have had the camera zoomed in a bit too close trying to make sure you could see what I was doing. Now we want to start by spraying a light mist around the area of our knots. We don't want to go real dark, just a light mist to cover and surround each of the knots with a bit of red. Once we have our knots accented, we're going to meander around and just kind of aimlessly add a bit of red in various places. Uh, we want to kind of flow, but don't, you know, don't put any real heavy spots, just real light, misty flow. We're not going to cover the whole bed. We just want some random coverage here and there, front and back. With the red done, we've cleaned out the brush and we've switched to some LP69 clear yellow. And for this, we do want to go ahead and put down a full smooth coverage over the whole bed front and back. Now, just to take the shine off as a final step, I'm going to hit this with some Tamiya flat clear. I'm not going to go heavy with this. I don't want to put it down wet. I just want a light misting on both sides so that the clear doesn't have that glossy wet. And that's it. Just a couple of quick bursts to take the shine off. And now we're going to head back to the bench and take a look at the final results. All right, here we are with the final product. I went ahead and painted the frame railing in Mr. Color's Super Titanium since this is a show truck. And I went ahead and did the bed trim in some bare metal foil. On the underside, I went ahead and hit the spaces between the boards with some dark gray Tammy at Paneline Accent Color Wash. So it looks like there's metal over the boards. And I used my trusty mechanical pencil and some Vallejo Silver to hit all the underside bolts. All in all, it's a pretty realistic effect. It looks a bit like yellow pine with a varnish over it or something. The red scattered in there creates an orangey effect that really helps to break up the yellow. And all the various browns we used in there helps create that grainy look, which really helps sell the appearance of this being wood. So that wraps it up for the painting wooden truck beds tutorial portion of the video. Um, I think Chris is pretty much done with his truck, and <laughs> I'm still working on the body. I don't know if he's done a video or not, but from the pics he's sending me, it looks fantastic. I feel for guys who do buddy builds with me. It must be frustrating waiting on me because I take like at least a month, usually around one to three months to build anything. I think my next step from here is gonna to be to take a break from the body and start on the engine and get that knocked out and proceed from there. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out Chris's channel and have a great weekend, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Also feel free to leave comments, feedback, critique, or anything else in the comment section below. I enjoy interacting with all my viewers in the comment section and try to reply to all the comments I receive. If you want to catch future videos, please consider subscribing to my channel and make sure you click the bell notification icon so you can be notified when I upload new videos. As always, thank you for watching, keep modeling, and have a great day.